Okay, well, I finished sacrificing a loaf of homemade bread. And yeah, it's totally dry. Um, I was going to buy one at Dollarama, a loaf of bread, but believe it or not, cheapest place you can buy it, it was still $3.50 a loaf. And I had one in my freezer of my own homemade. And I thought, what is the point of spending more money than for bread than what I can make one for? So I'll have to make some more bread. But yes, it looks like everything has dried now. We're told to dispose of the first bread test because this is done to, um, well, to test the machine for one and to um, get all the manufacturers or new, new machine smell out of it. And I don't smell anything anyway, so it's all good. So, here we go. Looks like everything has dried and crumbled the way it should. I have a little bit of water in my bucket. Now I um, did go to sleep and then wake up and <laughs> when, it was, when it was finished. So now I know to start this a lot earlier in the morning. So, and I'm usually up really early in the morning, so best time to start this machine, let it run all day. Okay, everything looks good really dry and hard. I've seen dry bread but not like this. It's a shame we could turn these into breadcrumbs but we're supposed to throw them out so that's what I'm going to do with this batch. Doesn't mean I won't be making breadcrumbs in the future. All right we are going to clean this all up and then we're going to start um, my first freeze-dried from things I already have in the freezer. Good afternoon everyone, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Well, I'm back in the spare room. This is the room that Mark and I share as an office. We both have our respective computers here. I have my sewing machine behind me here. I think a number of you have seen this in the past. I haven't used this room in a while, but I'm trying to get away from the hum of the uh, uh, freeze dryer. And it's not bad, but it's not, uh, it's, the background noise is not something you want when you're doing uh, a video. So I'm here. Uh, hopefully you don't hear the background humming too much. I actually don't find it uh, too bad. I think I initially didn't like it, but it's similar to the sound of my dishwasher running when I had the dishwasher in the other home. So it, it's not a sound that is um, terribly um, disruptive. Not only that, I think we always put the TV up <laughs> higher than that, so we can drown that out, no problem. Um, yet we don't have a lot of space. I mean, it, it is a fairly uh, sizable amount of space, but since Mark and I do share this uh, one room, uh, it's, it's a good size room, but still it has to accommodate both of us and this is our spare room. Uh, my freeze dryer is actually in my dining room. You make do uh, with what you can. That's the way life works. So I'm actually thrilled to get the unit. I will put up with some of the inconveniences with the lack of space that I have. That is my issue. And perhaps someday it'll be resolved and maybe perhaps someday it won't. Anyway, I am thoroughly excited. I have so many plans to do so many things with this freeze dryer. Initially, uh, I will be looking at uh, taking things out of my freezer, and I have been doing that, and prepping them to go into the uh, freeze dryer. I do have a batch of beans in there right now, and that's why you're finding me in this room. And um, yeah, it's very exciting, very exciting. I probably will be um, putting a lot of things in mason jars for the time being it's just so that um, that's what I'm familiar with I have all these mason jars they do take up a lot of space and they're empty and I might as well fill them up and yes I am going to seal them um, I, I'm sure that they will last just as long as they would in mylar bags and I don't have to try to find an extra spot to put these jars. I'll just put them back where they were. 
So, like I said, empty or full, they all take up the same amount of space when you put them in jars. And I like jars. I like to be able to see um, what's in the jars, where, you know, I'm sure I'll get used to uh, Mylar bags at some point in the future. And they, I think that they are great if you're going to give something away to somebody or you're going on a trip, you really don't want to take jars with you. Mm -hmm. Much better to take the Mylar bags. And right now I'm just focusing on doing uh, some individual things from my freezer, getting it uh, emptied out uh, of some things. And uh, in the future I'd love to try things like uh, chicken soup, uh, freezer meals, uh, you know, freeze-dried meals so that I just have to add hot water and you have a hot meal. That is uh, something that I will focus on in the future. But right now, it's a learning curve, and uh, I know a lot of you already have one of these machines, but uh, and certainly uh, you may be able to give me some pointers. Although, let me tell you, this machine is a newer model. The software on it is the latest software, and I was a little bit thrown uh, uh, because it didn't do what I expected when I turned it on. <laughs> I had watched a number of videos and uh, always it says that you can choose between food that you've pre-frozen and food that has not been pre-frozen. Well, this unit doesn't give me that option. Uh, it goes strictly uh, directly to f freeze mode and perhaps that is because a lot of people didn't properly freeze or uh, the food wasn't frozen adequately enough for the units to operate properly. I don't know but they have eliminated the opportunity. If your food is pre-frozen, I'm sure it takes a lot less time. As a matter of fact, I think it didn't. My food was pre-frozen and, and I didn't overload the uh, trays right now. So it um, cycled through to the drying cycle um, in a few hours. So that's good. And I don't, I think the drying cycle is what takes the longest, but I'll learn. I'll uh, document every batch and so far no errors, which is nice because you know, it's new. It's always a little bit scary and let me tell you, it's a whole lot less scary than <laughs> when I first learned how to pressure can. Now that, when I had a pressure can around the stove for the very first time, I sat there the whole time keeping an eye on things because I was just terribly afraid. So uh, if you have the jitters about using a pressure can, well, we go through that too. Um, I'm a little bit more comfortable with this machine uh, than I was with pressure canning, but that doesn't mean the same things can't go wrong there. Anyway, let me get to it. Okay, so here goes the first batch. And for the first batch, what I have decided to do was empty out my freezer, might as well use what we have uh, rather than go out and buy things initially. Now in my freezer I do have uh, green beans and cherry tomatoes for my own garden and why not process those first. Okay so it has run through the initial 15 minutes and it wants me to close the drain valve and load the trays and I have five trays of green beans ready loaded so I'm going to do that. First of all, I'm going to close the drain. Okay. And all these beans were previously frozen, so they are ready to go. And I still have more, believe it or not. So I've got five trays. I was going to do some of these and some of something else, but uh, I considered, I decided to do uh, one vegetable load at a time. Ah, something else. Okay, there we have it. Lock the door. The drain valve has been closed. Hit continue. And it's freezing. It just automatically goes to freezing. Apparently it doesn't give me a choice. And 
I think that the system automatically recognizes when the food is frozen, so we'll see what happens. Okay, get back to you soon. Okay, so my freeze dryer is busy, busy, busy drying my batch of uh, homegrown or garden-grown green beans that I had in the freezer. I also had this couple of bags of um, cherry tomatoes and I decided that uh, these would be probably the next batch I would work on and I understand that it was probably a better idea to cut them in half. So I have gone through the process of cutting them in half, trying to keep them loose and I'll try to keep them in the freezer until it is time for them to go into the freeze dryer. And of course the other thing I prepared was a whole bunch of carrots. Now these were also in my freezer and the intent is to empty out my freezer first since all this stuff has to be frozen or should be frozen before it goes in the machine. Can be frozen before it goes in the machine. Um, so I did try to separate the bigger chunks and I cut them down to smaller size. Once again they are back in the freezer awaiting their turn to go into the freeze dryer. So yes, my number one, you know, concern is get my free, get my little chest freezer empty of some things and then I will begin to process some things that I'm really interested in making. Okay, process complete. That is the very first batch that I have uh, put through the freeze dryer and uh, I'm taking out the five trays and boy are they ever light. Now there was an additional two hours that I could have uh, allowed them to dry but they were bone dry as far as I was concerned so there was no need for that extra two hours. <clears throat> so I am now uh, just putting them in jars. Uh, this is what I'm going to do today. I may change my mind and put them in a vacuum seal bag but for the time being I'm taking advantage of all these empty jars that I have. Now I started this process at 7.30 a.m. and uh, immediately the uh, after you've warmed it up for 15 minutes because it wants you well cool it down I guess for 15 minutes it went immediately to the freeze cycle and at about 10 a.m. it started vacuum freezing and shortly after that it didn't take long at all I, I wasn't watching it moment by moment but at 10.07 I noticed that it had started the drying cycle um, and the drying cycle is what seemed to take forever and it did finally finish at 1 a.m. I still had the option to um, have another two hours drying cycle but when I uh, uh, tested it I realized that no these things were bone dry they certainly did not need an extra two hours so I stopped the machine <laughs> at 1 a.m. at night I, did sleep somewhat but I did wake up at that point and uh, packaged them in jars right away so that uh, they, they don't pick up any moisture from the air. Okay so based on the time that the whole uh, thing completed its cycling I've determined that it's probably best if I started uh, freeze drying say four or five uh, late afternoon and let it run all night and that way it should be ready during the day when I'm up and about and not disturbing my sleep uh, which I didn't mind actually but you don't want to do that all the time. And I took advantage of using my little uh, electronic uh, mason jar sealer kit and sealed each one of these. Perhaps next time I may use Mylar bags and the um, impact sealer but for now this is the route I'm taking. So uh, what a joy that little thing is. It's very quiet. It makes no sound at all and seems to do the job quite well. So anyway uh, this is my first attempt. Now I do plan on uh, doing many 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 uh, freeze drying experiments and seeing how they work out. I did not taste these because they were beans. Uh, perhaps uh, at some point I will also try rehydrating them but this time around at one o'clock at night I just couldn't be bothered doing anything more <laughs> than sealing them up. Anyway uh, I will be going through the whole process in the next couple of videos and I do have another batch ready to go uh, pretty much right away after the unit has properly thawed. Anyway, 
Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills, and uh, we hope to uh, show you many, many experiments that we run on this unit as uh, time goes on.